Hello, I'm Josh Hoig, um, Offense Coordinator at Gannon University. We're here today with Athletic Director U. We have a great cast of, of coaches that, that were kind enough to come out and spend time with us today. First off, we have Coach Kevin Sumlin um, from the University of Arizona, head coach, football coach there. Glenn Caruso, head football coach at St. Thomas in Minnesota. Um, Lance Leopold, head coach at Buffalo University um, in New York. And then we also have Coach Mark Farley, head football coach at University of Northern Iowa. Thank you guys all for being here today. Um, coach Sumlin, I, I kind of want to start with you. Why is it important to start building uh, that sense of commitment to your program with new employees from day one? And what are some of the things that you've done to do that? Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, it starts in the hiring process, you know, looking for guys that, that are a good fit for your organization, but also bring new life, maybe some new ideas. Not necessarily you need those new ideas right away, but uh, to kind of understand your culture and, and instead of just you know going for names, we go through a lot of, of different ways to do that uh, in, in the hiring process. But coming into a culture and, and, and setting expectations and, and them understanding, hey, before you get here, all right, here's what we expect out of you, uh, it's, it's, it's a big deal. I, they give me a hard time, coaches do, because I say all the time with players and coaches, you're only responsible for the information that you have. Mm -hmm. And once you have that information, now you understand the lane you need to be in. Well, that's great. Are there certain ways that you, you go about communicating those expectations to them? Um, is it upfront in the interview process or what if it's a holdover from a previous staff? I mean, what are some of the ways that you get across like, hey, this is my vision uh, of where I want to take this? Yeah, I think it's, it gets back to communication, just like we just talked about. I think, you know, communication is the key with 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 young people, with coaches, with anybody who joins an organization so that there's no misunderstanding about what the expectations are. And then when you have those expectations, I think it's clear that you know the, the the level that you need to be at or, or what is expected of you and there's no misunderstanding during that point and, and if there's a problem um, with meeting those expectations you have to act on it immediately and I think people respond accordingly great thank you Coach Lapold, I'll come over to you next. You know, one of the top reasons people change jobs or change industries altogether um, is a lack of personal or professional growth. I mean, what are some of the things that you do to ensure that the people that work for you are working for the, the best of the organization and not just trying to collect a paycheck? Well, I think just a little, little bit what Coach Sumlin was talking about, too, when you talk about the people that you hire, I think in, in our personal situation at Buffalo, I was very fortunate of the 10 assistant coaches that we have and probably three of the four really um, support staff people that are with us daily were people that I knew before I took this job. And with that, A, I know their character, their work ethic, the integrity that they go about the job, but also had a pretty good feel about where they're at in their career and their career career goals. I know, I, you know, uh, office coordinator before he even came with me to Buffalo said, you know, if you want to prepare for, you know, the, you want to do the job that you're doing now the best of your ability. But you also have to show your head coach that you're willing to prepare and do things for the job that you want. And when you have people like that, you try to give them those opportunities, whether it be in leadership, whether it be in, in speaking, or it might be in collateral duties outside of coaching their position to help prepare them. Because I think that's part of our responsibility if they do want to be, whether it be from a position coach to a coordinator, a coordinator to a head coach, hopefully give them those opportunities to grow and develop. Okay. That kind of builds upon another question that we were going to talk about today is, you know, so I'll just kind of skip down to that. Through your career, have you guys found it difficult to give up some of the things that you're great at doing? Um, obviously, you've gotten to the points in your career where, you know, you've done things really well. How hard and difficult has that been to give those duties away to someone else? Because like you said, I mean, you got to give them those opportunities to be able to progress through their careers. But also, you've gotten to the point where you are because you're great at doing those things. I'll start with that because I was a linebacker coach by trade. Mm -hmm. So I find myself still today working towards that drill because it's kind of what I, what I played. It's what I grew up doing. It's what you love to do, and you're really associated with that. So it was a very difficult position to give away, if you will, to your position coach. But I think that makes our 
kind of our legacy at, at our school anyway is that it is. We're, we're defensive, uh, noted for defense. We're noted for our linebackers because I think there's a lot of pride there in those coaches taking that responsibility and probably with a little bit of a extra eye on them. Mm -hmm. But you do have to let them have that latitude to make it into their group. And I think that's what I've progressed from a young coach to an older coach is I want to be in that drill at a younger age. But as you progress through your career, it's th it has to become theirs under your watch. And there's a balance to it, obviously, to completely take you out of coaching linebackers. In your situation, right, would be like completely taking uh, Coach Saban out of the opportunity to work with the DBs or something like that. I mean, there is still a knowledge there um, that I think the coach has, to your point, because you got there. But you certainly have to allow that coach or that coordinator, whoever you bring in, to make it feel like it is his and that he can grow it. But also at the same time, know that they have a guy who can do some things and has done some things pretty well in coaching that's sitting in the office if you care to walk down the hall. So absolutely a balance. Yeah, it's it's a, um, you know, when the first time I became a head coach, you, you know, the first week is just, there's no manual for it, right? You, you don't know what, you know, you're trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> and it took me about two weeks to say, you know, am I going to call plays? And that's hard not to do if you've been doing it for a while, right? So, um, but you got to find the right guy that's, that, that you're comfortable with and, and still talk about, you know, philosophy because everybody's got a different personality. And um, sometimes, sometimes you're not thinking the same. And, and I think when you know who that person is, it's a lot easier. Um, but the, the hardest thing to do, I think, is, is, as Coach said, was, you know, you step away from certain drills, certain things that you've done for a long time and things you believe in, then you can still get them done. You just got to make sure that you communicate that to, <laughs> to those coaches. And otherwise, it can, it, can, it can be a little... Uh, it can get ugly at times, but you know that I think the communication piece is the big deal. And being tactful with it, yeah. maybe maybe it's not telling your linebackers coach to do it while his right. Sam and his Will is right in front of him, but pulling him in the office and and allowing him to cultivate it in his own way. And, and coaches see that, like if 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 you're just standing there watching that drill as a head coach, and you've got <laughs> nine other guys and all these guys coaching everywhere else, they they understand it. So you know it's it's that's all part of it. it but uh, I think that was. As you pointed out, that's the hardest move because you have to do so many other things um, outside of football and then uh, and then manage a staff and players. And so it's really hard to be a position coach of any kind and uh, uh, from from a day to day basis. I get yeah, I, I guess I'd say my, my past is a little bit different than, than some others, but the but Three and a half years before I became a head coach, I had spent three seasons off the field at the University of Nebraska. And it, re it really gave me a different side of what really happens every day outside those two staff rooms. Mm -hmm. And it made me appreciate the work of the support staff and gave me the insight of all the things that were being done behind the scenes. So I became a head coach and then at the division three level, and there's a lot of things you're trying to get done and make sure you have enough part-time coaches and other things that I, I, I made the commitment that I was going to do that because coaching at the division two and division three level, when your head coach was a coordinator play caller, anytime there was a call or an interruption, everything came to a halt <laughs> and everybody's waiting for it. And I, I, I said, I got to let the guys coach and do their jobs and and so I, i've tried to work hard at that and give the latitude i go back to uh, lance and i had a conversation the night before the national championship game back in 2011 and i asked him about now lance is uh, amply qualified to call offense anywhere and he was at we, we competed against each other in north dakota state and uh, uno and and um he told me he said i said when did you realize i asked him when did you realize that you weren't going to call plays and he said when i took the head coaching job i knew i had one large set of shoes to fill i don't know if you remember this he said i didn't want to double my job and, and make it two sets of uh, shoes to fill and i can find someone who could do that job and um, sometimes as a younger coach it's difficult to come to that realization but it sure showed a, a heck of a a lot of maturity to get to that point. And I think you have to come to that realization sooner or later because you only have so much time. You only have so much time. And, and if you're comfortable with that person, um, you know, it was like, uh, like in my situation, it's probably a little bit different. Uh, Dana Hogerson was, I'd known him. Um, he was at a different school. We'd 
played against each other for the last five years, uh, recruited the same area, and uh, it worked out. You know, but that was really a, a hard time to step back and say, uh, man, we got a lot of other things to do with building this program. But to put the trust in, in another person gives you some other time to do a lot of different things that, that, uh, that sometimes are football related, sometimes are non-football related. But uh, according to my family, everything's football related. <laughs> right. Yeah. Job I, security, no doubt. No, I know that feeling. I really do. <laughs> Um, uh, just a, a quick break here, guys. Um, uh, again, I'm Josh Lloyd, offense coordinator at Gannon University. Um, we're here with athletic director U. We have Kevin Sumlin, head coach at University of Arizona, Glenn Caruso, head coach at St. Thomas University, Lance Lapold, head coach at Buffalo, and Mark Farley, head coach at the University of Northern Iowa. Um, now, you guys talked a lot in our last segment about different traits, um, different traits that you look for the coaches, being able to trust them to be able to give some of that stuff over. Um, coach Farley, I'll start with you. I mean, what are the attributes of an exceptional assistant coach? I mean, when you're going through the interview process um, and looking to bring somebody new into your program, whether you have a previous relationship with them or there's someone you're just meeting, what are some of the things that you, you're looking for? The number one thing that I've looked for that's really paid huge dividends is a great teacher. Uh, when you get in an interview, sometimes guys will get on a board and they'll try to scheme things up and draw things up that work against and that look good on, on a board. And there's some guys and probably some of the best coaches I've hired really aren't very good on a board because I hire a lot of guys that are up and comers that are just getting their room, if you will, their segment for the first time to teach. So they're not good on a board. But as soon as you take them away from the board, I call them grass coaches. Once you take them away from the board and you start asking about the technique of the position and, and getting involved, whether it be a pass rusher or a defensive back or a quarterback, you start to watch them on the board and they're teachers. And if they can engage me for two and three hours where I'm asking questions, I know they can engage our players. So I think that was the most critical thing and the guys that have been most successful that I've seen from young coaches coming up is that teaching attribute. Second thing I look for is they got to be a great person because they got to be a mentor. Uh, they're an extension of the head coach, they're an extension of your program in these meeting rooms. And when they walk in there, they're, they're teaching young men to make good decisions, not just on the football field, but in life. And it's related to football and it's all about winning on Saturday. But ultimately, when you're with somebody that much, four hours a day, sitting in these meetings, going to practice, they're going to take a lot of the manhood from it as much as the player part of this thing. And that's why I think it's critical to have a great mentor as much as a great teacher. Yeah. And there's, you know, I guess, Coach Caruso, how would you liken your family atmosphere and when you go to hire someone and how that kind of ties in? Because, you know, you said you spend a lot of time with these people and it ends up becoming like you with your football program, um, the coaching staff, it becomes a family um, within the family that you already have. Um, back home. So how, how do you kind of add all that in there? Well, I, mean, I think a lot of people are going to, when they ask about hiring, they're going to talk about fit, whatever that may mean to them. Um, for us, there's one non-negotiable question that I'll ask, and it can manifest in a lot of different ways. But is this young man that I'm hiring, would I want him to coach my son or my daughter? It's pretty simple. I, I know how I expect our children to be raised. But I think most great coaches, they're going to come in a lot of different types of packages, but there's, there's this sense of, of, of selflessness. I mean, when we talk about family, and I know we talk quite a bit on, on these shows about it, uh, but forget about me, I love you. That's nothing more than just simply a vow of selflessness to put someone else before you. And we see it all the time. We have to sometimes put our family on the side to focus on our football See, We all have times where we have needs and wants. And when we can find an assistant coach that is willing to put someone else's needs in front of their wants, well, that's a definition of family. Dad used to say, don't, don't get it misconstrued. Genetics and bloodline is different than family. Are you willing to be sacrificing of yourself? And anybody here who has kids and wife and a program with a good culture understands that. And I think that goes to the core, like Coach said, to start this whole thing off. When you interview, there is nothing wrong with being intentional. There's no such thing as it being too early to have great communication. So why don't we start the process with that instead of something fancier that gets convoluted and then you have some fallout later? Pretty simple. Thank you. Um, next question, Coach Sumlin. Uh, I'll kind of start with you here. Coaching staff and organizations, they're made up of 
people have varying levels of leadership maturity. I mean, you have guys who are just starting out, maybe it's their first job, they're an unpaid intern, GA, all the way up to people who are, are coordinators and everywhere in between. You know, how do you manage the different levels of leadership maturity amongst your staff? Well, I, uh, I'm probably a product of how I was raised as a coach, I'll put it that way. You know, and, and so as a, as a graduate assistant, you know, anybody that was on offense or defense was really managed by those coordinators. And then the head coach at that time uh, that, that brought me into this business managed managed the coordinators. And so that message was brought through that way, which which made it easier for him. And then one of the coordinators left and hired me as a head coach. I mean, hired me as a as an assistant coach because of that. I think it gave the coordinators a lot of reign or, or, or control over, you know, what was going on in their room and, and in their process. And so they got to know the young guys and got to know the young talent and, and you know, as they got their opportunities to move on to become head coaches, they either took guys with them because they knew their work ethic, they knew their day to day, it, what the, their jobs, they knew how they approached things, and uh, it was it really kind of worked out. So I've kind of I've really stuck to that, and I think it's been great um, for um, growth of of young coaches, whether it's quality control, whether it's graduate assistant, whether it's position coach. Uh, because, you know, ultimately, uh, I was real fortunate in my last stop as assistant coach, Bob Stoops is, was the best at it in, in, in the way that, you know, he, he only wanted to hire guys that could do his job. And he would tell you that when he hired you. And, um, you know, that's kind of a, you know, as an assistant coach and you're on an interview and the head coach it tells you that, right? It's a little bit, you can push you back a little yeah. bit, right? But... You know, and then you step back and say, you know what, then, yeah, I'm only hiring guys that can, can do this job. And then we'll help you get to that piece. And, and um, obviously he's had, I don't know how many head coaches come out of there, but, you know, that, that's, that's part, of the, part of the process. That's great. And Coach Leopold, do you want to kind of expand on that a little bit with how do you measure that growth process? So you talked about the process of mentorship. How, how would you, whether it's, hey, well, he's doing a great job and it's time to, to move him up or, hey, this isn't working out quite how I as expected. Well, I think you have to look, they say, through that evaluation process. And I think everyone has a set of strengths that they bring to your program and your staff. And so many, there's so much time, like, like our players, I think sometimes we, we, we want to improve everybody in every way, but mm -hmm. sometimes you just better find the coaches and play to their strengths. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you find those ways to, wh whether that be in collateral duties, liaison duties, you know, some guys, and, and you start giving them a little bit more. Maybe, you know, if a guy's a great recruiter, a great organizational guy in recruiting, you, you know, do you divide up that a little bit more and put a guy in charge of maybe more junior colleges or give him a part of the country, you know, keep getting him ready. And, and what that does, I think, whether that be run game coordinators or, or partially in recruiting or whatever that is, I think that makes what coach is referring to a little bit about being a future head coach. It also allows you to have a more seamless transition when that first guy does leave for that better, for his coaching opportunity, you can elevate from within and not, not look for it. And I think that's the thing that we all look for. Well, gentlemen, Thank you all very much for being with us today. That, that was some unbelievable insight. I know uh, I definitely got a lot out of it. Um, again, um, Joshua Gannon University, thank you all for tuning in. We're with Athletic Director U.